Greetings, test equipment friends. So recently I got from eBay this HP timing generator. This is model number 59308A, and it came with this attached piece, which is a test tone generator, uh, model 10831A. And uh, the people who sold me this on eBay said that it does not power up, so I thought it would be interesting to uh, try to diagnose and fix this. So the purpose of at least the timing generator part of it, uh, from what I can tell from the manual, um, is that it's either a digital delay generator or a precision time marker generator. So in the timer mode, uh, it basically, you trigger it and then it provides a pulse a certain period after that. And you can see here that it says time in microseconds. I guess you can't go, yeah, you can't go lower than that. So this would go only down to one microsecond. And in the time marker generator, basically uh, when you trigger it, it sends out a pulse uh, every so often according to the setting on the front panel. So there's the function switch, either pacer, which is the timer uh, pulse generator, or timer, which is just the delay. Um, here's a button for triggering and resetting. In the back, we can see that these are the outputs. So we have, this is the trigger input, um, and it can be triggered um, either positive going edge or negative going edge with a threshold set to one volt or four volts. Here's the output. Um, the output can either be a 50 nanosecond pulse or it can be a square wave. Um, and the pulse, I guess, could be positive going or negative going. And they've got both ECL and TTL outputs. You've got your usual HPIB setup with the address over here. Um, and here is the power input, and there is the fuse. It, the fuse looks okay to me. So why don't we just power this up and see what happens? Okay, now I've plugged it in, and apparently nothing is happening, but then again, I don't see actually a power switch on this thing. Um, there is a power switch on this part, doesn't seem to do anything, but then again, it has its own separate um, power inlet. So again, this doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, the on button doesn't seem to, to, the on LED at least, or light doesn't seem to do anything. Um, and in the back, I really don't see any on off switch. I mean, there's, there's this thing that says bus pacer. Um, there's an internal frequency standard. So we can certainly try to uh, resolve this. And the first thing that we're going to do is check that the power supply is supplying the voltages that it should. Now, unfortunately, um, it seems as though whoever scanned this manual in um, neglected to unfold the sheets or maybe they did fold the sheets, but their software was dumb and did not recognize the width of the sheet. Um, so this is about all we're going to be able to see of the power supply, which is okay. Uh, so obviously we see the inlet over here along with um, some filter capacitors, and then we have the 115 to 230 volt uh, selector switch. Then we've got a big transformer, Followed by, on the one side, we have a diode bridge along with a filter capacitor for the input, what appears to be a three-terminal voltage regulator, and um, a capacitor on the output. And the orientation of the capacitor tells me that this is going to be a negative voltage output. Um, that is followed by, apparently, another uh, linear regulator and another uh, connected uh, filter capacitor on the output, which again will give us some negative voltage. Now on the other side we can see that we have a center tapped um, section uh, with a half wave bridge. Uh, the center tap goes down to ground. We've got an input filter cap, another linear regulator, and an output with some sort of jumper, and a bunch of capacitors on the outside. 
coming from the unregulated output, we have what appear to be some Zener diodes. We've got a 4.22 volt Zener diode and then a 2.87 volt Zener diode, which gives us about seven volts or so. So we can test this to see um, if it's seven volts. We can test each of these linear regulators because they are probably, they are probably well-known chips, U53, 54, and 55. Okay, U53 says it's an LM320H-12 regulator. That would be 12 volts. Uh, U54 just says linear regulator, but over here it shows that it's a 7805, which is a five volt regulator. Uh, and then U55 is an LM320 uh, 5.2 volt regulator. So this will be able to tell us what voltages we expect. So here we are uh, looking at the inside. Uh, we can see that there is the input transformer. Uh, we have some big filter caps down here. Uh, let's see, we've got a lot of logic chips. This over here says 1826-0122, which according to the parts list is a 7805. So there's the five volt regulator right there. And we can actually probe that to see if there is five volts coming out. All right, so here we go. Kind of very carefully with hopefully not touching anything. Probe. Okay, so I'm going to have this backwards really. Okay, so we're getting negative or actually positive 9.9 .9 volts on the input and on the output. We're getting the expected, whoops, we're getting the expected five volts. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check some of these TTL looking chips to see if we're getting actually that power routed. And yes, indeed, I'm getting 4.9 volts, which is enough to run the logic. So clearly the logic section seems to be working. Okay, so I believe that I've located one of the voltage regulators. So if, let's hope that uh, this shows up. Okay, that's the input, it's about 16 volts. And the output, and I've got my lead switched around so it's gonna look negative. So that's the output. Oh, it doesn't look negative. So that's the output, it's 12 volts. There's another set of three terminals over here, which I think is the other voltage regulator, which is a 5.2 volt reg regulator. So if I probe that, I should get something. So there's 12 volts. And on the other end, I'm getting negative 5.2 or you know, if I had my probes around the right way, 5.2 volts. So I know that all the voltages are being output properly. So we've got five volts, we've got, 12, we've got negative 12 volts, and we've got negative 5.2 volts. So that then leaves the question, why isn't this light turning on? Maybe just the light is bad. So let's take that apart. So this is how the front comes off and you can see that I've removed this uh, second unit. It was basically held on in the back and then there were these little grippy, grippy things that uh, hooked in to each other on the front. Uh, and then basically, uh, I didn't actually have to remove that because there is nothing over here holding it on, but there are screws on the top and the bottom. Um, and this just, uh, I was able to push this out because there are just these three connectors. Um, this board over here connects to these little rotary switch guys and it just comes off like that. So the only thing that's left is this, and we can actually see that things are labeled function, so that would be this, trigger reset, that would be this button, 
local PB that tells us whether the HPIB bus is controlling the device or if we're controlling it locally. And then there's addressed, remote, and on. On is the thing that I'm interested in. So the other thing that we could do is we could just hook a power supply up to it and a resistor and see if we can get these things to light up. That's probably the easiest thing to do, just to make sure that this, uh, that this LED actually does work. If it is indeed an LED. Now that I look at it, it kind of sort of looks like they're lamps. And unfortunately, the schematic doesn't say anything. Uh, if they're lamps, then they would have a resistance. So let's see if there's a resistance showing up. No, I don't see any. Well, okay. I don't see any resistance across this thing, which could mean that it's burned out. Let's try on this side. Ah, we're getting a resistance of 11 ohms across that one and 12 ohms across this one. So in fact, the only thing wrong with this piece of equipment is that there is a bulb here that is burned out. So I would just have to find out um, what the voltage and uh, resistance rating or current rating of this bulb is and just replace it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder that and take a look at it to see what I can find. Okay, so I just quickly desoldered this bulb. So let's see what we have to see. Does this actually come out? It doesn't seem like it does. This may in fact be all one piece, which is not great because that's uh, pretty custom looking. So let's see what sort of voltage we're getting across that bulb. Huh, five volts. Um, so that's actually interesting. Um, that's five volts DC. Is there any AC voltage on that? Nope, it doesn't look like there's any AC voltage. So this is basically a simple five volt uh, TTL um, output and we can just slap an LED across it with a resistor. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's actually getting a little more dim. Um, let's, uh, where's the front panel? Maybe I should see what it looks like through the front panel. This may not be the best LED for it, but actually that doesn't really look too bad. How about we stick with that? Sure. All right, let's see how it looks. It lights up. It looks pretty good to me. I did look on uh, Mouser and DigiKey to see if I could find this bulb. Um, the parts list says that this is a T1 and 3 quarters bulb. Uh, that refers to the lens size and it's 5 volts. There was even a manufacturer and a manufacturer number. The manufacturer no longer exists and uh, a Google search for the part number turns up absolutely nothing. Um, I didn't find anything that looked anything like this. Um, I did find bulbs that went up to maybe about here and then had a bulb on top that might have actually worked. But um, I also looked at the specification um, of this uh, sort of bulb and uh, they draw something like 100 milliamps, which is quite a lot, whereas this draws barely a fraction of a milliamp. Now, I don't know if you can see this, um, this sort of bright spot, that's not a camera effect or a lighting effect. Um, there was actually a label sitting on top of here and when I removed it, you could see a very definite color difference between uh, what was under the label and the rest of the thing. Um, it looks like, I don't know, um, this has been sitting around for, well, I mean, if the chips are from 1983, it's been pretty much 35 years. 
Uh, so that's 35 years of ultraviolet. Um, I might try the retro brighting technique on this. This is just plastic. Um, it's not metal. Again, this is extremely cheaply made. Um, there are these labels in here, which I don't think will work very well for the retro brighting process, but that's on the bottom. This is on the top. And um, the top is definitely <laughs> browner than the bottom. So um, I also took the labels off of here. Um, and that worked pretty well. So, um, and in case you're wondering, I did actually test that the square wave function worked. Um, it turns out that there's a little note here that says output not square when exponent equals zero. And I did have the exponent here set to zero. So instead, I just set it to five times 10 to the one or 50 microseconds. And it was bang on 50 microseconds. So. Uh, I changed this and the frequency definitely did change and it was a nice square wave. So anyway, there we go. That's about it. Thank you very much. Bye.